Welcome back to another Spill Drop tutorial. Today's design is modeled after my Super Triangles showroom base. Several of you requested that I create a build tutorial for that base, and that's what I've done here. I've made some slight changes to this design to make it a little bit more livable, as the original design was just a showroom. And my evolution of this design includes an optional compound wall, as you can see here. It is a six-sided compound wall with a window on each side just below the roof on each of these windows is a heartbeat sensor that detects whether or not someone is in front of the window this is useful because they feed back to this diagram here by the front door that shows which of these heartbeat sensors is currently detecting someone outside my base and where that person is located relative to the heartbeat sensors. This compound has two entrances on the narrower ends of the base. This one happens to be closer to the front entrance and has two horse troughs for any of your four-legged friends. You'll notice that each of these triangles that extends off the base to help secure the compound has its own color coordinated wiring. You can see I've got purple here, a fuchsia color there, and a green color here that each correspond with the lights in this array to let you know where someone is outside of the compound. Outside the base, I have two 360 cameras. I have one placed between these two wall segments and the other between these two wall segments. The first one here on the right is located right there, and the blind spot for that camera starts right about here and extends to about here, where the opposite camera can detect you meaning that if someone is going to raid you without you being able to see them from those two cameras, they'll have to do so from either this corner here by your gate or the opposite corner right over here where they'll have a brief window of invisibility caused by the small blind spots. I have some small resolution to that by adding a third 360 camera up on top of the roof or of course you can wire your turrets cameras in as well and use those to help guard the compound. This compound is large enough for refineries or large furnaces if you wish but keep in mind that people will be pretty easily able to build just straight out of your compound here or jump off the top of your furnaces to get out of the compound uh, whichever happens to be more convenient so you may need to secure the outside of your compound if you want to have any of these large deployables inside this compound also features a car lift here which will not be included in the build tutorial but you can see how it is incorporated into this like, small gatehouse section. I also have a battery here which fits into the honeycomb and acts to serve all of these cameras and heartbeat sensors out here. You'll notice that on all of these walls that have three triangles across the top. These triangles with the walls and the windows are built straight off of those inner triangles. For the two gate sides, those are on the narrow end of this base design where there's just two triangles wide. I went off of the left triangle and built my gatehouse wall here. As you can see, triangle, triangle, and then that which would be honeycomb essentially. And that gives you this perfect little gap for the high wall gate between these three triangle wide segments filled in in the middle here. You've got plenty of room to put two high walls down. And if you set those in line with this wall window here, then they should snap very neatly together as you can see all the way around. So as you can see here, this wall is perfectly parallel with this window here and the same on this side right here. Now, outside of the base, we've got some other deployables here, some drop boxes up in this prison cell wall that allow you to reach in from here, from down on the ground level. It's kind of hard to get in there because it's so high up, uh, which could help you detect if someone's in that blind spot of your base. There's also a shotgun trap here to secure and a peek down from the second story. Straight through this door, we have our airlock, our first sunken triangle, and our sunken trapezoid for furnaces. We have a locker pod here, and then we have the outer walls of our core. Got garage doors, of course, locking all of this down, some furnaces, and some drop barrels up here. And close that off. 
The second floor here, just above the front entrance, has a respawn area there and there, some weapon racks, some furnaces, of course, a computer station here so that you may access your cameras or drones, garage doors all the way around, of course, some drop barrels with the options here for some automated pathing, a food station, some barrels here for loot storage, in this corner, we have a prison cell looking out over the rest of the base. We also have some drop boxes here underneath the mixing table and some food supplies, which include a refrigerator, a grill, and some additional storage. I have some shotgun traps in this base as well, primarily guarding these ladder hatches, which can be kind of a weakness in many base designs if they're not well protected. Now up at the top of the ladder hatch, we have the roof, of course, guarded by a turret. We have our peak downs here that let you look down at the foot of the base while still being protected from above. Obviously up on the roof, you can also see a number of turrets on these little shelves that stick out from the triangle. So basically the opposite of these peak downs, there are little turrets all the way around. It can be wired in and used to protect this base. There's also plenty of room up here for some water catchers that can feed the small garden we have and a vending machine bunker, which allows you to access the storage in the back of the vending machine and then reseal it to prevent further access. All the way up top, we've got the windmill. The side that the SAM site is sitting on is reinforced a little bit here in case the SAMs are fired and curve up towards the windmill to kind of help protect the windmill a little bit more. There's also a third 360 camera up there, giving you a little bit more vision of the surrounding area. And this ladder hatch will take you up to this small shooting floor area and the SAM site, of course. And then back down, you can take these ladder hatches to the first floor. Through this garage door, we have, again, our furnace trapezoid. When you lay it out like this, you actually get a little bit more room. So I put these weapon racks down here, which are part of the weapon rack DLC. I've also got a furnace pod here behind this prison cell wall with some drop boxes up there. I've got a refrigerator squeezed in here with some additional drop boxes just to kind of show you how fun and silly this prison cell wall stacking can get. Up here we've got a tier 2 set up with some industrial crafters and some drop boxes so you can get some automation going if you'd like. Down here we have a small farm that you can use to make teas or grow some food while you are waiting for everything to cook in this space. There's also a battery pod down here that you can store your electricals in as well as the battery. It's got its own garage door of course to seal it off. Up above is our bedroom pod with a locker, a low barrel, and a bed. Some storage back there, pair bench storage, an extra turret in case you need it for some base defense. This would be probably our primary loot storage. Uh, depending on how you lay out your base, uh, you may want to reinforce that wall a bit more, possibly even upgrade many of the outer walls to metal once you expand to a certain point. Got a water barrel storage here for the garden. Got a window down here that peeks into the core so you can effectively defend your base from the very, very core if you wish just by peeking from under the tier three. You may need to pop that box out of the way, but you can see with that box removed, you actually get some pretty cheeky angles. Now you can see the battery there and all the way to where that refrigerator is out front. Now also down here in the core, we've got our sunken diamond with our locker pods, our barrel here that kind of helps you navigate a little more easily and a small airlock in the core, some garage doors, more furnaces, of course, because you can never have too many additional furnaces up on the second floor of the core. This jump up lets you look down to where those lockers are and kind of help secure the core. 
You've also got a vending machine here with a window that peeks out as well. So you can kind of defend from here or see what's going on in the main part of the base. Behind this vending machine, you've got an armored door. And if you pop this door off its hinges, you'll notice that there's a barrel hidden back behind that vending machine, which is a pretty cheeky way to stash your boom or protect some desirable loot. Back down to the core, you'll see that we've got the TC tucked in here, connected to this automated system intended to act as uh, upkeep protection to help you have a little bit more security while you're offline. The other secret about this little layout here is that there's a barrel hidden under these rugs. You can see there's a sunken triangle um, that's sort of visible there, but it's covered up by the rugs. So it's kind of a little secret here that would certainly be exposed during a raid, but kind of acts to reduce that mobility issue with open floor tiles while still having that extra storage. That is the full base tour. Now this is what the footprint of the base looks like uh, just without any of the walls and without the extra compound bits there as well. So you'll see we've got the patio here, the airlock, we've got the first sunken furnace there that would be right inside the front door where the locker pod would be as well. The sunken trapezoid here. We've got the core here. Uh, this is obviously where the lockers would be sunken down in that little diamond. And then through here is where the tool cupboard would be represented by a hobo barrel. That's the footprint for the base. A little bit complicated and I would recommend that you start from tier 2 rather than tier 1 because it is very hard to secure this base from tier 1. Otherwise you have to chop some walls out or some floors and it can be just sort of a pain. I'm going to show you exactly how it comes together in tier two but if you wish to level it down for tier one you may have to decide between some walls and windows that will make it a little more secure around the core. I've gone ahead and placed this first foundation at the lowest possible level on the map so you want to find a nice flat area to build in possibly an ice lake or in the desert to place your foundation. And this is where the first staircase will be, right over there. Once you've got your square foundation down here, just to get the start, you'll place this triangle off the top and you'll build a hexagon. Now is where you're going to start getting the sunken triangles. So you'll place one here, raised, raised and another sunken triangle there do another raise there and then close that off like so now we'll go ahead and get our walls down
I'm not sure what's changed here, but these furnaces now don't want to place, which is always pleasant. But as long as you don't upgrade this foundation to HQM straight away, you should be able to fit these in here. I don't really know what causes them to not want to fit.
And that is the full build tutorial for this base. This is your trio furnace and flank base design as requested by several of you in the comments of my super triangles video. Now, for the expansions for the compound, you want to take this middle triangle here, build out with triangles like so, and then you'll place your wall here. Can build this out a little bit further if you want a wider compound, but it will not be quite the same as the one that we've got on that side. On the narrow end of the base, as you can see from over top, there are two, one on that side and one on this side. You may want to put your gatehouse wall coming off of this left triangle here, like so. Make sure that everything is connecting, of course, because you don't want your walls to decay. So you may need to do some of those just to make sure that the connection is solid. Sometimes these foundations can be a little bit dicey, so keep that in mind. This gap right here is perfect for your standard high wall. So what you'll want to do is get that thing lined up with your window. You want it to be perfectly parallel with that window there. It can be a little tricky, but it helps to kind of line it up like this if you can. And you see how that fits in there quite nicely. And then you'll do the same on this side here. And see how nicely that fits. Then of course you can rotate this wall. And if it's a little bit dicey, which it might be, like if this doesn't line up the way you want, you can always hold the shift key and that will let you unclip the wall and place it a little bit more creatively. So you can use that to your advantage. Make the placements like that. And you see here the corner is very clean. It looks great. And if you've got these narrow gaps here, like you see before you, you can place your gate in here rather than two walls. I recommend using the gate with the opening facing in, but you can you know, place that however you please. Uh, this is just sort of the way that the stone high wall is designed to be placed. And you can see that it's very cleanly snapped up against these walls, which is quite lovely. You can open that gate up, come on in here, and close it very comfortably from inside, and you have these two flank windows that let you see out of the compound. It's a very nice touch. Of course, you'll carry on this same process all the way around, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much how this design comes together and how you can expand it into the full compound. And this is what it could look like. This again is the general footprint without any of the expansion as you can see below. Thank you for watching another spill drop tutorial video. If this is your first spill drop video and you're interested in more content like this with building tutorials or exploits or just general rust adventures, you might consider subscribing to the channel. It helps us notify you when a new video goes out and it helps our channel grow even further. And I'd like to thank all of my current subscribers for their support. This has been your friend Spilldrop, and I will catch you in the next video.